So where did the frequencies come from? I got this list from an osteopath who bought a practice in 1946 that came with a machine that was built in 1922, and that machine came with a list of frequencies. But where did the frequencies come from? Here's the thing. Back in the early 1900s, probably starting about 1906, 1908, there was a growing interest in electromagnetic therapies. People were developing machines, medical physicians and osteopaths were testing frequencies. By 1916, 1917, in there, there was a, a journal called Electromedical Digest. There was the Electromedical Society. There was the Pathometric Society, which would be like in our world, that would be like the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. So these were the Pathometric Society and the Electromedical Society were medical physicians who were interested in electromagnetic therapies. They, I have no idea how somebody in 1922 decided that the frequency for the tendon was 191 hertz and the frequency for the nerve was 396 hertz. I just have no idea. Um, because... In about 1910, and in the next seven years after that, the Flexner Report came out. It was funded by um, the same people that they had a drug company. can't remember who it was. Anyway, so it was funded by the American Medical Association, and they were trying to standardize medicine because there were no medical schools. There was no standard of practice for medicine in 1910. So the Flexner Report came out. By 1917, the AMA, which is the one that granted the license to practice medicine, the AMA said, hey, you guys that are using electromagnetic therapies, you really ought to knock it off. 1922 came along. They were still doing research, still making machines, still having meetings. The journal was still being published. There was a pathometric journal. Um, 1934, the American Medical Association got serious. And they said, okay, look, anybody that uses electromagnetic therapies, uh, herbs, nutrition, or homeopathy will lose their license to practice. And they would just brought the hammer down. So it all just shriveled up. The machines went in the back room, got covered up with a sheet. Grandpa died, so these, these guys that were practicing in 1934, they started practice in the early 1900s. So they're now in their 50s and 60s, and as grandpa died or dad died or they retired, the machines went on the junk heap. They went on the trash. It's like, I don't know what dad used this machine for, but it's in the back room and it's covered up with a sheet and we've got to move all this stuff, so it's out of here. So the machines went away. And when that generation of physicians died, it was gone. We have no information. It, none of it survived. There's some in the rare book room at the Naturopathic College. Um, but the language is very quaint, and there's no detail about how they developed the frequencies. There was a thing about tapping or tones on the abdomen. or, But how does somebody decide that a tendon is 191 hertz and... Um, a tendon sheath or a bursa is 195 hertz. So my role was, I'm a clinician. I'm a, I'm a fix-it guy. So I got this list. And it's either going to work or it's not. So my role has really been just to use these fre frequencies clinically and verify that they're correct. There are some frequencies we don't use anymore because they didn't work. So there's a frequency for sclerosis. I could not find anything it was good for. You know, scarring is one thing, but sclerosis is like a little bit stiffer and stickier than scarring. Wasn't good for anything. So I was just about to dump it when I heard from Tom Myers, who's an anatomist and a myofascial um, expert. He was teaching a class for us, and I said, I can't figure out what sclerosis is good for. He said, well adipose sclerosis, the fat. I have a frequency for adipose. And it turns out that's the only thing that sclerosis is good for. 
is taking adipose that is glued to a nerve or your belly, you know, the, the omentum in your abdomen when you get inflamed or scarred, that gets scarred. It doesn't scar, it's sclerosis. So once I combined sclerosis and the adipose, that worked. So the frequencies are very specific. So my role and frequency specific microcurrents role has really just been to use them, validate it, verify it. What's it good for? What do they do? They either work or they don't. And that was the first year when we were experimenting with it. The first year was all about treating myself, treating George, treating my kids, treating volunteer patients. Um, if a frequency was not correct, if we used a frequency that didn't do you any good, we had to find out if it would do any harm. So that was the first task. If a frequency doesn't work, is it going to hurt you? So that's the first thing we found out was no. It, if there's nothing for it to resonate with, it just goes right on through. doesn't do anything. Okay. Once we knew it was safe, then we could go on testing them. So that's where the frequencies came from. They came from a list. And where the list came from, I can't tell you. I wish we knew. That's the missing link. Um, it's a part of medical history that is lost. Um, but it's been a real adventure verifying what they're good for. People will always want to know, well, can you come up with new frequencies? Is, can, you, can you make new frequencies? Can you scan for them and find, find out about them? It's like, I'm having enough trouble figuring out how to use the ones I have, right? If the frequency is correct, the frequency combination is correct, then it always works. And anytime I have one practitioner who's pretty good at sort of dowsing four frequencies coming up with them. They're kept on a separate list. And the frequencies on that investigational list have been there for 10 to 15 years. I have to have proof. And in the last three years, we've actually verified three of the 15 that he has come up with. Um, but I'm very particular about, about preserving the integrity of the list that I got. Since we don't know where it came from exactly or how they did it, the least we can do is protect it and make sure that it is conserved and preserved um, accurately. And, um, and also make sure that there's no, there's no harm done, that we keep track of what works and what doesn't. So that's where the frequencies came from.